In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint up this McFarlane Grey Knight in fast, effective steps. Whether you're here to learn about how to convert the McFarlane Marines into Grey Knights, how to paint the force weapons, the blue armor, or the cloaks, or you just want to know where you can get your hands on this and other McFarlane scale conversion kits. Welcome to the video. My name's Alex, you're watching Frog Lane Studio, and with the models that we have commercially available in the McFarlane scale being somewhat limited, I mean we have three different sculpts for the Space Marines, a Sister of Battle, and then two Necrons, but none of the other races represented yet. I wanted to get my hands on a 40k faction that hasn't seen any love from McFarlane or Games Workshop. But what about these factions? Well, unless you're a sculpting or a converting god, at the moment, we need to lean on third-party independent 3D sculptors and printers. As a lot of you guys know, I work with Fabricator and Fiends, and whilst not sponsored, he does like to send me a lot of his latest prototypes to test out and paint. Over the coming weeks, we've got lots more new and exclusive builds coming out, and I'm going to be making videos on each of them. We've got apothecaries, chaplains, tech priests, bikes and bionics. So if you want to see those, make sure you like and subscribe and let us know in the comments which one of those you want to see us tackle next. So this week I wanted to convert up and paint his Psychic Knight conversion kit. Now the parts themselves come ready to go with just a small amount of conversion work needed. So the donor model I disassembled first and if you don't know how to do this I've got a link just up here to my disassembly video. I wanted to use the replacement shin guards and chest piece so using a hairdryer to heat the donor parts up I very carefully cut around the edges that join them onto the main model. Then using a pair of pliers as the plastic was still flexible I was very carefully able to detach them ready for the new parts to take their place. The chest piece needed a little bit of green stuff work just to smooth the main armour out so using a sculpting tool and my wet finger I was very carefully able to build this back up and with the prep work done it was then just a case of adding the psychic knight conversion parts to the model ready for priming and painting. I wanted to paint the armour first, you can go for what I think is the proper colour. Grey Knight Steel. This I put through an airbrush all over and it really gives that lovely blue steel look that's synonymous with this faction. It looks a little flat though on a large model like this, so using a diluted 50-50 mix of Talisar Contrast and Airbrush Thinner, I very carefully added a darkened tint into the shadows. Now, I was trying for speed over precision with this step, so there's a small amount of cleaning up to do, but this is easy enough with a cotton bud and some airbrush thinner, just going over any of the overspill areas to tidy up the whole piece. The final steps on the armour was the panel lining, for which I used Ultramarine's blue contrast paint, and then also the highlights as well, and these were done using a mix of Grey Knight Steel and Stormhost Silver, and just like that, the body was done. The next part of this then that I needed to tackle was the cloak and the tabard, and after priming them with an auto body red, I wanted to try out a new technique. As I said, with this model, we're wanting to paint it as quickly and cleanly as possible. If I was to hand paint it, it would take absolutely hours, so using contrast paints and tones instead should hopefully expedite this process. First off, I used Blood Angel's Contrast over the entire model to give it that nice, rich red shade, just to start darkening down the shadow areas, and then after a couple of passes, adding more and more purple tone into the mix to get those shadows even deeper. Now we've done the shadows, we need to move on to the highlights. And for this, I very simply carefully airbrushed Army Painter Dragon Red over the highest areas. With this step done then, it was just onto the final part, which was the edge highlights. All I did with this was just to add white into the mix and paint them on with a brush. Considering this was the very first time that I tried this technique, I was really happy with the end result. Both the tabard and the cloak combined from start to finish took me about an hour to finish. And with these two steps done, the model's really coming together. Now I'll cover a couple of the other details for you really quick. So my gold recipe that I use is Stuart Semple's Gold is Gold. That gets painted on first and then I use Seraphin Sepia just to give it that aged look. I tend to use this on most of my large models as I find the rich tone and coverage that it provides is second to none. The other key part is those gems. Those gems are done using Stuart Semple's Mirrorist Mirror to give that, well, mirrory finish. 
followed by a quick coat of Tamiya X27's clear red. Just these two paints combined give a perfect finish to those gems every single time. And so once that was done, it was time to work on the force weapon. Now the majority of the weapon was painted using the techniques we've covered earlier. And the only part that I really wanted to share with you guys was the blade of the force weapon itself. I wanted to keep it simple, but striking. And so the main body of the blade was painted with a dark metal and then Talisar blue airbrushed over the top of this. Once this had dried, I set about masking off the main body of the blade and just exposing the cutting edge. I airbrushed 50-50 mix of pure white and airbrush thinner and doing so helps with that smooth transition over the edges. However, once this dried, I felt it was too stark. So using the Talisar contrast, I came in from the other side and very carefully added that color transition back in to give that smooth transition of the dark blue through to the white on the very edge of that blade. And with that last step, it was done. That's it. Yup, unfortunately, he isn't mine. I painted him for sale, and overall this model took about two days to paint with about 15 to 20 hours put into him. As a small YouTuber and commission painter, I can't keep these models that I paint because I need to sell them to make a living and to keep on making these videos for you guys. So if you have enjoyed the video and you want to help support me, you can check out this and my other models that are on eBay. And if you want to buy the kits themselves blank for you guys to paint, you can find them on Fabricator and Fiend's Etsy page. I'll leave a link to both of them in the description below. I'd just like to take the time to mention as well that the channel does have a Patreon page and a massive thanks goes to all of my Patreons. I couldn't do these videos without the amazing support of the Frog Lane family. So thanks once again to my Patreons. Thanks to you guys as well for watching. I've been Alex from Frog Lane Studios. Stay safe, keep hobbying, and may your pots of paint never run out.